Our next speaker is uh, Trans PRK with Shwin Damaris, Dr. Arthi Agarwal. Hello, everyone. A very good afternoon. Uh, thank you to all the panelists and moderator and uh, Ayokar uh, for giving me the opportunity to share my experience on Trans PRK. I have no financial interest. So I, uh, recently I have shifted uh, to the Schwind uh, platform uh, and I'm here to sh uh, share my six months of experience. So like uh, any clinician, uh, the first apprehension is when you're changing uh, from a new platform, uh, you know, where you, where you are comfortable using it for many years, you've seen the outcomes, the machine knows you, you know the machine well, you know how it behaves in your hand. Uh, but to my surprise, within six months uh, of using this platform, Schwinder Maris 750S, uh, I, have, I am in love with the machine in less than 20 days of using it. So whenever, uh, as a clinician, when we are planning to buy a machine, these are the three things which come in our mind. First is technology. Second is its repair and maintenance, that how would you, you know, once you take the machine, then how, what next? And the third is their recurrent expense. So coming to the technology, uh, Schwind platform is one of the most versatile platforms which is available till date. Uh, right from, uh, you name any laser refractive correction it can do, uh, Cornell, uh, or, you know, uh, Wavefront, uh, Optimized, uh, Trans PRK, PTK, everything, and Press B Max also. Uh, this is how uh, the Schwind platform uh, looks. You can do abrasion-free Cornell Wavefront uh, optimize as well. So what exactly is TransPRK? TransPRK is smart pulse technology. So this is very different from the normal PRK what we do in other platform. It basically, it's uh, the residual bed which we have is more smoother. Uh, it is It does not have that roughness which normal other platform has. So uh, in you know traditional PRK, the step involves that we are going to first remove the epithelium either by manual way or using alcohol or laser based. Uh, to contrary, in trans PRK smart surf technology, what it actually does is that it's a one step treatment where the ablation of the refractive error as well as the ablation of the epithelium is done at one step. So how it is different? This is the main reason the why the uh, outcomes are so quick and so precise and the healing time is very less is that the first thing what it does is it removes a refractive error. The first laser which it fires, it removes a refractive component and then the second laser it fires for the epithelial removal. So this is I think what is making the outcome so precise. Like I have done refractive errors of as low as 0.5 to 0.75 spherical and cylinder and it has given really very accurate results. So it's a single step procedure, so you don't have to shift the patient, especially when you're doing a femtolasic. You can do it on one single machine. And the main uh, benefit of uh, this uh, as contrary to PRK is that in PRK when we are first firing uh, the laser for PTK mode or we are removing the epithelium by manual or alcohol based and then we are shifting to the laser so that time difference which is there it causes corneal dehydration whereas over here that step is eliminated. The second thing it's touch free so there is absolutely no learning curve anyone a very well trained technician can also do it. Uh, no suction, no cut, no flap, so no flap related complications. And when we are talking about there's no cut, so it's more biomechanically stable. And we all know that surface ablation for years together have proven to be the more superior of all the laser based refractive correction and wider application. Of course, we know that well, when we are dealing with some kind of informed frustic keratoconus or a suspicious topography or somewhere where we are dealing with thin corneas, laser-based surface ablation base is the way to go. And yes, so the main apprehension whenever we are talking for any surface ablation is the pain and the time taken for the proper healing. But over here in trans PRK, trust me now, like now that I know my six months of results, I've done uh, almost more than 200 eyes of trans PRK. Uh, the pain as compared to what is there in a traditional PRK is very less in trans-PRK. It is actually based on the uh, way the ablation profiling is done. Uh, 
the healing is less than two days. So when in a normal traditional PRK, which I would be doing earlier, I, I would at least be placing my BCL for three days. Here I'm removing the BCL the very the second day, like after the once I've placed the BCL today, tomorrow evening also if I can, I can also remove or maybe two days later I can remove. And the be beauty of this procedure is that the patient is reading six by six the very next day. Yes, first day itself rather, yeah, but then when we, third, yeah, but then uh, I have seen and patients are very happy, uh, earlier in PRK I would get phone calls in the, you know, same day in the evening that uh, doctor, my eyes are paining, I'm not comfortable, but in this and after my pain management, which I'm going to discuss in the further few slides, it has, uh, my results have drastically improved no calls and the patients are so comfortable. The next day they call and tell that I am doctor very comfortable. So the main difference in the prof uh, the epithelial, uh, the, what do you say, the ablation profile in trans-PRK versus PRK is the, in trans-PRK you can actually have the same diameter, you have the same diameter of the epithelium as well as the uh, refractive error correction. The Epithelium is gradually, you can, uh, you know, the thickness that is in the center, you can keep it as whatever, 50, 55, and in the periphery, you can gradually increase it. You can customize. As you want, you can customize uh, microns as much as you want. So the main difference, like I said, uh, trans-PRK is a single-step procedure. You don't have to, uh, the main corneal dehydration, which is actually uh, the main cause where PRK, uh, you know, has its limitation. Uh, Trans-PRK is a single step. Uh, more customization profile on Schwinn platform because you can change the optical zone uh, by 0.1 uh, mm. You can uh, do customization. You can uh, reduce the aberrations. You can increase, decrease the volume. You can decrease the depth of your uh, uh, profiling. Uh, it's a smart surf technology, so it has a smoother ablation profile, which is one of the most highlighted technology when we are talking, that's the most highlighted point when we are talking about trans-PRK. And uh, like I said, the main difference is that it first removes the refractive error and then it removes the epithelium, unlike uh, which is the reverse ablation pattern in PRK. It has faster healing and uh, this I'm actually talking about through my experience. I've seen patients are very comfortable. Uh, the pain score is very negligible and the main thing is there's no extra expense, uh, especially when we are talking about other platforms where they, they have a card system and every hour you are charged for the you know, uh, trans-PRK mode in other machines. So this is the uh, ablation map as well as what I was saying that you can actually uh, decrease or increase the optical zone and accordingly you can take a decision at how much residual you want. The second thing comes is the repair maintenance. Uh, IOCare group has been really kind, uh, like uh, they are just one phone call away. The main apprehension from shifting to a wave light to a Schwinn was what about uh, the repair, whatever the maintenance, you know. But this has this is one thing which uh, I would say hats off, I'm really... Uh, very happy and there's no absolutely, uh, I'm so comfortable using this platform. And the second is the recurring, ex recurring expense. So uh, earlier whenever I used to open my machine, almost 10 to 15,000 would just go in opening the machine. Whereas in Schwind platform, uh, once I do a gas exchange, it lasts me for 21 days. So practically every 21st day I'm doing my gas exchange. And the ET and the fluence test, which I'm doing, just cost me 150 rupees. So earlier when I would plan my case, and maybe after two, three days, I would open my uh, refractive suit. In today's day, every six, every day, for six days in a week, my refractive machine is open. And I'm really, I don't have any hitch to even take one single patient in the OR. I'm not going in detail about the post-op. The only thing which I would mention here, which has helped me uh, do a better pain management is the cold uh, balance all solution which I've used and the cold uh, contact lens which I've started using. So uh, ever since I have changed this regime after discussing with my seniors, it has uh, drastically improved uh, the pain management because it's the earlier when a little bit of pain the patient would experience, with, but with this cold BSS and cold BCL, that has also reduced. Almost as such, the patient does not require any NSAID or a painkiller. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy using this platform. Is there any further questions? Most welcome. Yes, sir. 
I think excellent presentation. I've been I've been a fan of these machines. In fact, I bought two of them. Now I'm going to plan pick up the third one now. Oh. Uh, the Holy Grail, pain and haze. Uh, that yeah. is the only question which is unanswered because when the haze will kick in in which patient is a little tricky question. If it was not for that, I would be hundred percent PRK surgeon. So that is the only issue. Number one. Number two. For pain management, of course, I have other machines also. This is one of the lowest pain scores. I couldn't agree more with you. There are a few things which I've started doing is that I've started shifting to silicone-based contact lenses. The pain has gone down tremendously. And we give the patient an intramuscular Wovaran injection on his way back home. These two things have really taken one part of my headache down. The only one which remains is which patient will get a haze and when you don't know i have patients coming to me after four months early phase mm -hmm. and this is in spite of telling and this is not with just the, just this machine but any machine Correct. so we have got a questionnaire of any skin ailments history of use of retinoic acid antihistamines whatever literature has thrown at me i've tried to put it in the questionnaire but still one to two cases out of 100 will throw a haze what grade that's a different issue Will. So I think if anybody from the audience can also answer this question for me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please yeah. go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, pain is not an issue. It started out. His. Actually, most of most of people think that PRK is one step surgery, but in my view, PRK is three step surgery: preoperative. Operative and post-operative. Absolutely. Preoperative, you should have very good evaluation of dry eye and add necrotal disease. Intraoperative, don't touch much. Mm, try to avoid touching as less as possible. And post-operative, medication like saclosporine and fluoromethone, as we're talking, for few cases stop in one month and few cases go up to two months. Yes, sir. So, sir, like you said, of course, haze is one thing which is always there in the back of our mind. But when we are weighing to the risk and benefits of a flap-based or, or, or a lenticule-based procedure to a trans-PRK or a no-touch LASIK, uh, definitely if I have to do any of my relative, I would say that I, I have done uh, cases of refractive error of spherical equivalent of 10 with trans-PRK. And the corneas, as compared to what I would be doing earlier PRK, Trans-PRK, the corneas are very clear. It's amazing. You would actually, uh, if you don't have the file patient's you know, registration number, you yourself would not be able to make out that this is a, a surface ablation procedure after two weeks. The cornea is crystal clear. Even on the table, the transition zone is so smooth between the epithelium and the stroma. Sir would agree with me. Yeah. It's so smooth that you need to actually go on a high magnification to see where does your epithelium end. It's such a smooth transition. So the I epithelium grows very fast. Yeah, the beauty of the machine is the uh, laser profiling which they have done right. is very good. So two things which we have done, are you using uh, mitomycin? Yes. So yes. we use mitomycin for every patient. And and this bandage contact lens, whatever variety you're using, but I use uh, all uh, with medicine coated. So I put a... Acuvel. Not Acuvel, you may not have to Acuvel. Yes, with Dr. Shetty, we have learned about the Acuvel in his course and everything. What I have started using was difficult to get Acuvel. So any of our NSA drop, mm -hmm. so any uh, uh, any Ketora like any of this, you can use it half an hour before you just put into the contact lens. Don't open the case. You put a contact lens. That has drastically, almost 90% have reduced my pain factor. One more additional thing we have did is now since with uh, another company, we are getting a preservative free Unims from Indian company. So that just for five days, we will just add it twice in a day. And that has drastically solved these two issues. Haze up to six number I have not seen. What I have realized, I do get a haze for a refractive error which I have corrected above six. So what we have started adding is that we have started adding cyclosporine from the day one, not continuing away, waiting for that. So we start with the steroid, but at least twice in a day I have added cyclosporine and now we have to see it almost three years follow. So, so do I we wait for the epithelium to be epithelized, then, then we start, start cyclosporine. Ideally you should only then do it. With the previous experience, so what I did this time, because I had a haze uh, factor coming in the past, so that's the reason in this patient we did it. And then a lot of patients which we have operated above six also, but then we have started with the regimen, just 0.05 twice in a day. It's not 0.1% cyclosporine. And it's working at least right now for me very well. Is it more of a diopter-based, 
Like your is it more of diopter based or ablation based? Because my cutoff is 110 microns. Beyond that, I am cautious. So this could be six, or this could be five, or this yeah. could be four, depending on the zone I'm taking. Yes. Like a large pupil, I'm going in for a larger zone. So uh, for audience, six should not be your 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 ballpark. I would say 110 to 120 microns should be your ballpark. Beyond that, the literature also says uh, the haze goes up. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the, so it's, it's the depth which is important, not the not the. Yeah, actually, this is the ablation it's micron is more. more. And you can reduce the amount of ablation, so you can hmm. go for certain higher power if you want to. But the, as sir was telling, the depth is depth very is the criteria. Yeah. So sir, I have burnt my fingers using uh, you know NSA uh, topical drops. So ever since then, I have stopped it. But what I have seen that if you like, th this is something which you can try. I place my contact bandaid contact lens one day before in the fridge in the chiller tray, and that has worked wonders. So we do that. So we put it in our fridge and just half an hour before. We don't use a topical NSA drop. It okay. is so only just we preserve it for half an hour before in the contact lens that case, and then we just use this preservative free NSA just twice in a day. Okay. So we are not using of anesthesia, uh, topical mm -hmm. anesthesia drop, but we have shifted to this. Okay, great. Thank you.